fairing a hull is the process in which the bulkheads are sanded and shaped in order to assure the subsequent layer of planking has a smooth surface to rest on each bulkhead. It's really the process in which the shape and contour of the hull truly comes alive. Now the best way to fair a hull is to use a combination of a sanding block and a piece of medium or coarse sandpaper folded in half in your hand. You'll now need to sand the bulkheads in a manner that if which a plank is laid across them front to back, that it rests smoothly and flatly along the edges of all the bulkheads. You're basically sanding off the corners of the bulkheads at the front and back of the model. When you lay a plank across the bulkheads, it becomes really apparent which sections need to be sanded. As you move towards the front and the back of the ship, You'll notice that the bulkheads will end up with an angle sanded in them along their edges in order for the plank to rest across them smoothly. And this is exactly what you want. The idea is to provide a smooth surface for the planking to lay. Now many modelers will fill the sections between the bulkheads with balsa wood in order for them to see the hole better as they are fairing. This takes more work, but it can be a handy process and it does provide an excellent um, platform for your planking to follow. Now this photo shows how to fare a hole without the balsa fillers, it's just bulkheads. The important thing to remember is how critical it is to spend a lot of time on this step and get the bulkheads smoothed out perfectly. So after the planking is installed, it only needs minimal sanding afterwards in order to obtain a smooth appearance. If you observe the angle of the sandpaper in relation to the hole in this photo, you'll see how the front bulkheads will end up with an angle sanded into them. As you move towards the middle of the ship, virtually no sanding will actually be necessary. During the fairing process, methodically press planks against your hull in order to ensure your model is eventually ready to accept planking in every area of the ship. This photo shows the front view of the fared hull. Now note the angles sanded into the front bulkheads. And as we discussed before, as you move towards the middle of the ship, again, the bulkheads have not needed to have been sanded very much at all. Okay, so before I begin this next section, this section will be the hardest part of the build. As you move through this section, don't be disheartened whatsoever if your planking doesn't end up as precisely as you'd like. The whole planking in this entire section can later be filled with wood filler wherever necessary and sanded smooth and painted later. Now, I've actually seen projects in which the builder's hull looked horrifying before being filled with wood filler and painted. And it's actually not uncommon for this part to be done quickly and messily, then having the modeler do precision work or even precision work coupled with the use of high quality woods on the upper part of the hull, which is very easy to plank, in ending up with a model fit for display in museum. Okay, so back to the build. Now do take note that this project is assuming that the modeler will be using 1 8 of an inch wide inexpensive basswood strips easily obtained at your local hobby store. With the exception of the deck and upper sides, these planks will be painted. Now if you're an experienced modeler or woodworker, you may wish to use a higher quality dark wood for the whole planking with the intention of applying stain rather than paint later. The choice is up to you. Now I do want to emphasize, especially in this chapter, to watch this video all the way through before proceeding with any of your work. This is extremely important now, and it is actually important in subsequent videos. But by reviewing each video in its entirety before you begin work, you might, and you probably will, change the way you approach the build when you do begin the actual work. Now you've probably already realized that the empty slots in the model are for the masts to eventually rest within. At this time, glue a tiny piece of wood on each side of the profile former 
at the mast locations in order to build long square boxes that the masts can slide down into later. Okay, and now you're ready to start preparing your planks for eventual installation on each side of the hull. The first plank to be prepared will follow the deck line of the model on each side. Planks will need to bend along the hull at the deck line and eventually be glued in place. And it's easiest to extend the planks past the bow and past the stern and cut them perfectly smooth and sand them perfectly smooth after they've all been installed later. The plank should extend for about an inch past both bow and stern. The top of the plank should be oriented along the deck line of the model from front to back and there should be a nice continuous planking bend along the model so that the planks, when viewed from the side, display a pleasing curve to the eye from front to back. The best way to prepare planks for hull planking is by soaking them in hot or even boiling water for a short time and then pressing them to the hull by the use of rubber bands, clothespins, or any other item you have handy. While the wood is wet and warm, it's pliable, and it'll let you maneuver it into position. Now, once the wood has dried in position overnight, it can then be slightly tuned when dry by carefully bending it up, down, sideways, etc., so it lays against the hull in perfect position. You'll probably end up breaking a number of planks before you know just how much these planks can be bent. This photo shows a few different methods for holding a plank against the hull to dry. Now note the cut up clothespins are messy with glue and ripped paper templates. It really doesn't matter what the inside of the ship looks like since it will not be visible when the build is finished. It also doesn't matter what the tools look like used in construction. If something works, use it. At this point, all the emphasis is on structure and precision of sanding and plank placement. Now in these top two planks on each side, or his top plank on each side, has dried in position, go ahead and glue them to the hole in exactly the same correct position, making sure that no glue comes into contact with the outside surface, top, or bottom of the plank. When glue does come into contact with the surface, it coats the surface, resulting in a bad appearance when stain or opaque paint is used, as the surrounding surfaces absorb the stain or paint, but the section with the glue does not. Okay, subkeel. For this model, the subkeel will simply consist of one straight plank glued to the very bottom of the profile former from front to back. This will allow the installation of the garbard or very bottom plank next. And this will definitely be the easiest plank um, you'll ever install. So you can go ahead and do that now. Now for the garbard plank, before I begin this next section though, um, advanced ship modelers are gonna find this following instruction to be simplistic. And my design here, however, is simplistic since it's easy. This video is really intended for those who have not built complex ship holes before. If you're an advanced modeler, you can of course use your own preferred planking technique. Now back to this garbard plank, this is actually going to be the hardest plank to install. So once you get this one done, you're good. It requires a pretty extreme twist in order for it to be installed into the correct position. The best method to use to install this plank is to run extremely hot water over the plank or boil it, and then use clothespins, rubber bands, sharp thumbtacks, anything else you have handy in order to secure it to the ship to dry, just like we did with the other planks. It'll need to eventually twist 90 degrees from the middle of the hole to the stern. It'll rest side by side against the subkeel plank in the middle part of the hull, and it'll rest with the bottom of its surface against the keel plank at the front and back. Once you twist the plank into position, you'll notice a large gap as the plank twists against the keel. This is completely okay, 
This area will be sanded smooth and filled later. Once the deck level plank and the garbage plank on each side has dried, the rest of the planking can commence. We'll now want to secure a lot of wet planks against the hull to dry on both sides. Again, the easiest way to prepare the planks for the hull is to, to apply them wet all the way down the hull on both sides and let rubber bands, etc. hold them roughly in place until they dry. Some people use string as well. Note the planks can have gaps between them as they won't end up in this position permanently anyway. This exercise is just to prepare them in a way that when they're dry, they have a twist fore and aft with a nice bend in the center. We'll be fine tuning all of these later. Now when the planks have dried, write the number of each plank on the ends so you can identify where it should be glued to the hole. For this model, the first plank below the deck level plank had a number one written on the end. The plank below it had a two on its end, and so on. We've now come to the most interesting part of the build. When planking a hull, an even number of planks will not fit the area to be planked equally in each section of the ship. For instance, you might be able to fit 13 planks evenly across the midship portion of the hull, but find that only 11 planks will actually fit in the bow section. Since this build is aimed at beginners, we'll perform the simplest technique in order to remedy this situation. So grab a ruler and a piece of paper. Since the planking we're using is 1 8 of an inch thick, draw a line on the paper with a tick mark at each 1 8 inch interval. Once you've drawn the line and marked out 1 8 of an inch thick intervals, cut the line out so you now have a thin, bendable ruler. Place this ruler against one of the middle bulkheads of the ship and shorten the strip until it runs from the deck area plank down to the garboard plank. On the side of the bulkhead, take a pen and copy the tick marks onto the bulkhead. This picture shows the bulkheads after they've been marked. Now I should mention that this photo shows only a few bulkheads marked at the end of the process and a few planks have already been installed. The beginner will want to mark all of the bulkheads as that will make the sanding and shaping process far quicker and easier to undertake. So now it's time to make a number of your flexible rulers. Once you've determined how many planks the middle bulkhead will allow, you'll need to create rulers of the dimensions necessary to allow you to mark that same number of tick marks on each bulkhead. For example, if your tick strip did measure 13 planks on your middle bulkhead, you'll need to create proportioned tick strips for each bulkhead so you have an even 13 spaces for each. So for some of the bulkheads, they're not going to be 1 8 of an inch thick. They'll be less than 1 8 of an inch thick for each tick. For those who inserted and sanded balsa blocks between the bulkheads, this is where you'll actually obtain your reward. You can mark the hole in as many places as you wish in order to obtain a very accurate grid in which to run your planking. You can even connect the dots um, between data points with a slightly bent line in order to mark the entire hole for planking. The other component in all of this is that each plank will need to have its underside or top side sanded. Always use a sanding mask to protect your lungs when you sand. And what these planks are going to need to have very slight angles sanded in them so they rest squarely on top of the plank below them or below the planks above them as well as flush against the bulkhead. So here, here's what I mean. Here's an example of this in this photo of correct and incorrect planking. As you can see the unsanded planks will leave visible gaps when glued around a cylinder while planks that have been sanded on their edges fit together flush and they leave a nice smooth outside surface. 
Oftentimes it's only a very slight angle which needs to be sanded into a plank in order to allow it to be flush with its neighbor. It just depends where it's located on the hole. A single plank, as you will find, will have differing degrees of sanding required along its length. Now, if you wish, you can forego all of the sanding and just rely on wood filler later, assuming you're going to paint the hole. Um, but I do recommend sanding these just because it's satisfying to have a perfect hole when you're done. It's now time to install your first shaped plank. Let's start with the plank directly under the deck line plank. Now note that this photo shows a model which does not yet have the keel or garboard planks installed. This was actually one of my first prototypes when I was pondering whether or not to advise beginning modelers to plank straight down all the way from the deck line to the keel or not. I finally decided that it would be best to have a keel and garboard plank installed, which is the method which is the most proper, and which would give the modeler more planking experience they could then carry over to their next model. Okay, so grab one of the planks which fits under the deck line plank. It will probably need to be gently twisted, bent, or tuned a bit in order to fit into place. Once it is tuned enough so that it will rest perfectly in position, examine the plank. Is it truly able to rest absolutely flush against each bulkhead and against the plank above it? Are there any gaps? The best way to sand a slight angle into the top of the plank if you need to is with a firm sanding block. So you can gently sand the angle into a relatively large section of the plank with control. Now it's important to make sure not to sand too much of an angle into the plank. If too much of an angle is sanded into the plank, there might actually be a gap on the inside, which will make itself known only once you're sanding the hole smooth when the planking is completed. So really go for perfection here. And then of course, perfection isn't actually required, as I'll show you how to correct errors later, but it's really good habit to get into, and your model will definitely look better if you strive to make every plank perfect. Okay, so once you have the plank tuned and sanded, it's time to go ahead and glue it to the hole up against the plank above it. And here's where another trap can appear. Uh, we discussed this earlier as well. It's really possible and even common to sand the planks perfectly align them perfectly, and obtain a beautifully smooth hole after sanding, and still end up with a problem. And the problem, as you know, it's glue. If too much glue is used to adhere the planks to the hole, it'll seep between the planks and into the wood on the outside of the planks. Oftentimes, the modeler won't even know this has happened until they apply stain to the beautiful hole and they're shocked to see the stain job come out looking less than great. And this is because the stain will not penetrate the wood where the glue is present, leaving the blotchy appearance. Now the way to get around this is to be very strategic with your glue application. And remember, if glue does seep out through a crack, not to wipe it away. It will only serve to smear the glue around even more into the pores of the wood. Just leave it as it is, and it will dry there, allowing you to cut or sand it away later. Now, if you're in a slight panic at this point, still don't worry, because you do always have the option of painting the whole of this model, which will be done here. So glue stains, wood filler, etc., etc., will be covered with paint and made into a non-issue. However, you do have the option to use any type of wood you wish on this project. If you're confident in your abilities, if you're an experienced modeler, there's no reason you can't use a nice wood on the hole, be very accurate in your sanding and gluing, and end up with an extraordinarily beautiful hole once the stain's been applied. You can even plan on doing this, and if it doesn't turn out to the standard you'd like, you can go ahead and paint over it and no one will be the wiser. Now in theory, you will have tuned your planks so well that when you apply glue and lay them against the hole to dry, you won't need any sort of clamp to hold them there. And of course, the theory doesn't always hold true. 
So if a plank, for whatever reason, does need help to stay in place to dry, clothes pins can be applied to the nearest bulkhead and pushed up against the plank to hold it there. It's often best, if you do this, it's best to place a piece of scrap plank between that finished plank and a clothespin in order to make sure the finished plank doesn't get dented by the clothespin. Okay, so now it's time to install the plank above the garbage plank on the bottom. This will be more difficult to install as the angles are more severe down here. Just take your time when you're tuning the planks. If they break, um, as they will, uh, just tune another. It's actually surprising how far you can twist the basswood planks before they fracture. So this photo shows glue drying in the bottom of the ship. This is done in order to provide strength to the inside of the planking. And of course, this glue has been applied after the planks have already dried in position. Okay, so now you can proceed to tune, sand, install, planking, one on each side, one on top, one on the bottom, until you're ready to install the last plank somewhere in the middle of the hole on each side. Now this plank will probably need to be sanded on both the top and bottom for a proper fit. When the last plank has been installed, it's a good idea to spread the inside of the model with glue, just like we did in the bottom, in order to give the hole more strength, as well as to act as a mini filler for any gaps you may have where the garbage planks meet the subkeel. Now for the impatient and or daring. If all the above instruction has been a turnoff, there isn't anything really stopping you from laying the planks as you wish with no measuring or pre-sanding angles in any of the planks. If you do this, there will be large gaps between the planks and you will have some very interesting cutting to do afterwards, but it's possible to construct a model this way if you don't mind using a lot of filler uh, and are going to be painting the hole. However, if you are planning on constructing models in the future, this is the perfect project. It's very strongly recommended that you follow the previous instruction of measuring and sanding as it is a forgiving project and it's a perfect one to start honing your skills with. So this photo shows, as you can tell, it's an example of a kind of a pedal to the metal hole with no pre-shaping of the planks beforehand. Initially, it's a very easy process to lay down the planking, but observe what does happen as the gaps close. The remaining planks filling this void in the center on each side will need to be sanded and shaped anyway, and the pointed ends of the planks will end up in open space without a bulkhead to support their ends. But it's still something that you can do, and I do have to be honest, it's kind of fun to do it that way every once in a while.